white gives me anxiety when i see people decorate their entire house in white i'm like i could never visit because i'm clumsy everywhere i go the people really want to know who i is and who i be they stop and stare when they see me hey y'all welcome back to my channel if you're new here welcome my name is keisha jante and i'm in the process of having my very first home built it's a semi-custom home here in the Atlanta area, and I'm taking you guys along the journey with me. So if that's the kind of content that you like, go ahead and like this video, hit the subscribe button, and turn on your notifications so that you can be notified whenever I post a new video. I have a goal to reach 300 subscribers by the end of December, so help us sister out. Hit the subscribe button, please. Thank you. <laughs> As you can see by the title of today's video, I'm going to be going over what I spent in the design center aka what i spent on upgrades so the first thing i want to mention is that my design center experience or the process that i did my upgrades in seems to be a little bit different than what i'm seeing in a lot of other videos on youtube so what i mean by that is we my friend and i went to go tour the model home on august 1st and after we toured the model home i guess for some people, like, that's all they would do. And then they would decide, yeah, I want to put the, you know, contract down. I want to put a contract in for this particular lot, whatever, whatever, whatever. Before I left, <laughs> I wanted to know how much money I was going to be spending if I was to purchase a home in this community. Kit and caboodle. So, like, when I'm buying a car, I want to know, like, tax, tag, and title. How much does it cost for me to drive off the lot? And I felt the same kind of... Um, I had the same kind of, you know, mindset when I was buying this house or thinking about buying this house. Before I left, I want to know how much money I'm actually going to be spending on this home. Because while I'm new to the new construction process, I knew that there was going to be an element of, you know, upgrading that I might want to do, meaning I was going to be spending more money than whatever the base price was. I want to know how much is the lot going to be, how much is, you know, the upgrades. Even though I didn't know the name for like all the things that I was going to be spending money on, I want to know how much it's going to cost, right? So I sat down with the consultant and this could vary, you know, this is probably going to vary from builder to builder, community to community, even probably sales consultant to sales consultant. But I sat down with him, my friend and I, and we went through pretty much all the options and we didn't necessarily look at colors, but we, we did look at colors insofar as you know, if you want this, these color cabinets, this is going to be the level that you're going to have to upgrade to. You don't need to pick the color right now, but just saying, if you want gray or white cabinets, then you're going to have to do level four cabinetry. And so we went through the process like that. And so when I left, I had basically a really good idea of what the price was going to be when I decided to sign that contract or if I decided to sign that contract. Now, when I did finally sign the contract, I did make some changes. So, uh, for example, when I spec'd out the home, I did a screen and porch. But then when I went to go actually purchase the home or sign the contract, I decided to upgrade one more level and get the sunroom. Some things I took out, some things I added in. But at the end of the day, because I had done the bulk of all of the, um, you know, before, because I had chosen the bulk of the options and the upgrades that I wanted, the price didn't change that much. The biggest change from when I spec the home, so when I say when I spec the home, my home is not a spec home. It is, an up, it is a from the ground build, but I sat with the cons, with the sales consultant, as I mentioned, and walked through all the options. So like, we kind of like, it's kind of like a spec home in that instance, in that respect is where everything is already chosen at that point. So the biggest difference from when I spec the home on Sunday to when I signed the contract on Friday was the lot premium. The lot premium from because I because I wasn't sure what lot I would want on that particular day that I went and looked at the model home, he kind of just threw in an estimate of a, of a lot premium. And honestly, I don't know if any of the lots that were even available the day that I did the model tour. I don't even know if they would have been the price that he gave me. But it was a lot higher. The, the actual lot premium that I ended up paying was a lot higher than what we estimated when we did the walkthrough of the rundown of all the prices. But other than that, everything else pretty much canceled each other out. Things that I added, canceled out, things that I subtracted. So it wasn't, you know, that much of a change from 
when I walked through the model to when I signed the contract. It honestly never even occurred to me that people would go through the process and sign the contract and not know what the final cost of the house was going to be. It might be the accountant in me, but I need to know numbers. I don't like being surprised when it comes to money. So um, that was kind of my experience. I sat down with the consultant on our very first meeting and I said, how much is this going to cost me? And we walked through all the numbers. We added things, we subtracted things. And then when we got to the end, we changed a couple of things, but the price didn't change by much other than the lot premium. Um, and then after I signed the contract, there were a couple of additional changes that I wanted to make that I did make that did cause the price to go up a little bit, but still not very much different from what I signed um, when I signed the contract because when I signed the contract, most of the stuff was already in place. Speaking of making additional changes, when you are doing a new construction home, usually when you sign the contract, you have to make certain choices right then and there. So you have to pick the lot, you have to pick the elevation, and you usually have to pick your structural upgrades. For my builder, I had three days from the, sign I, from the time I signed the contract to finalize my structural upgrades. Um, and then you have, you know, three weeks or however long your builder gives you to actually do the design center upgrades. Again, all my stuff was done up front, but I did make some additional changes after the fact. And even past the due dates for some of these things, I've continued to make changes. And some people might say, well, if they give you a due date, how are you able to make changes after the fact? Usually, as is written in the contract, you have to pay a change fee in order to make changes after the due date. How much the change fee is, is it going to be dependent on your builder? But from what I've seen on YouTube and experienced in my own contract, there's generally going to always be some kind of change fee. Now, whether they charge you the change fee or not is going to be up to the sales consultant probably that you're dealing with. I've seen some people say that they have to pay the change fee. I've seen some people say that they haven't had to pay the change fee. That's really up to your sales consultant and your builder. They might just put it in there to discourage you from making changes, but don't really penalize you for making those changes. Um, you know, but they have the right to do that or the option to do that if they want to. So I've tried not to make too many changes after the fact because... I ain't trying to pay, you know, a million dollars on top of the cost of the house just because I have change fees. And in a lot of cases, the fee is per change. So you might have one change order, but you might be changing several things. So you'll have that change fee times however many changes that you make. Um, and sometimes, like, even you might be saying, I want to add, you know, four lights. And you might think lights is one change, but they might they might charge you a change fee per light. So you really got to be mindful of that. Talk to the builder, see if there's, you know, talk to the sales agent, the construction manager, see how that works for your builder. So those are the main two things that I wanted to discuss up front. And now I want to get into my actual upgrade. So because I did them all together, I'm going to talk about my structural changes and my design center changes in this video. But I tried to focus on essential upgrades. And for me, the essential upgrades were structural and electrical. So the structural things were things that you know needed to be in the plan and would be more difficult to change later on not only because it might cost a whole hell of a lot of money to do but also because i'm living i'm going to be living in an hoa community and if it's something on the exterior of the home that i want to change later then you know you have to get approval from the hoa board so i went ahead and did as much structural as i thought i was going to want in the beginning so that i don't have to worry about that anymore my structural upgrades, I have my change, my latest change order because I have eight of these. <laughs> so I have my latest change order here. Um, so my structural upgrades were, um, well, first of all, before we even get to the structural upgrades, let's talk about my elevation. So the elevation is going to be what your house looks like from the front. Uh, or from the outside sometimes you um, it might sometimes the size in the back might also change but typically it's the front of the house and what that looks like now some people here on YouTube are going to tell you not to waste money upgrading um, the elevation or going for a higher elevation package personally I don't subscribe to that because I have to look at this house every time I drive into it and I know me and I know that if my house is ugly I'm not gonna like it so if I don't like the way the front of the house looks I'm gonna change it and not only that, 
Although the exterior of the house may not cost somebody to pay more, so it's not increasing value in that way, people do decide whether they even want to go inside the house based on what the outside looks like. We've all watched HGTV and, you know, property versions and house hunters, and we've all seen people drive up to a house and they're like, nah, that ain't it, and drive off without even going inside. So to me, yes, the outside of the house is not necessarily going to increase the value, meaning that people aren't necessarily going to pay me $10,000 more because the house looks like this on the outside. But if I'm thinking about resale value, which is something that I was thinking about as I was picking my up my options because this is not my forever home. If I'm thinking about resale value, I want people to come inside the house. And if I think the house ugly, somebody else might also think the house is ugly. So I did pay a little bit more for my elevation. Now, here's a funny little story about the elevation. Um, we went to go see the model. And of course, the model has the highest elevation. Now, little aside, we always think of the models being like the most upgraded house. Like this house has like a million dollars in upgrades. That wasn't necessarily the case for my model home, which I've learned, you know, since then. They did have some things that were highly upgraded, but they did have other things that were standard. So um, don't always necessarily think that when you go into a model home, you're like, oh, I can't have the house look exactly like this because this is going to be $500,000 after all the upgrades. Maybe not, because maybe that house is not as upgraded as you think it is. It just depends on the builder. But anyway, the exterior was definitely <laughs> upgraded. And um, when you walk in to, or when you pull up to the house, you walk up to the front of the house, there's this little patio outside and has like a little awning over it. And it's like the smallest patio, honestly. Like it's not a patio that you can really go sit out on. For me, it's like mostly for decoration or to make the house look nice. And when we pulled up, my friend was like, cause again, I walk, went with my best friend. She was like, oh Keisha, you need to do this. You need to add this to your house. It's so cute. And the sales consultant said it was an upgrade. And I was like, yeah, no, I don't be outside like that. I am not paying just to have a front porch that I can't even sit on and that I wouldn't sit on if I could. Just, you know, I'm not doing that. I'm not spending money on that. We go sit down with the consultant and he walks through the elevations with us. And he was like, this elevation that's on this model is $20,000. My friend was like, nah, <laughs> you don't need that. <laughs> We're not about to pay for that because you ain't going to be outside like that. Why would you even pay for that? She did a complete 180. And then he showed me what the base elevation looks like. And I was like, no, I don't want that. It's basically a box. It's just like it has no curb appeal. It has no uh, character really isn't the right word, but it's just like nothing. It was nothing on the, it was just flat on the front of the house. And I was like, yeah, I don't like that. So he did tell me that the model home had an all brick front, which is why it was $20,000. But there was a similar design with siding and stacked stone. And so I got that. So it has the same look, it's just not brick. And that was $5,900. So now let's talk about structural. So when you first walk into the house, since we're starting at the front with the elevation, over on the left hand side, you know, if you've been watching my videos, that there is an office space or an area that I'm using as an office space. It's a flex room, one of two in the house, and it is an open space. So it could be used as like a dining room or, you know, whatever you wanted to use it for. In the model, they had it walled off with French doors and um, originally I decided I wasn't going to do that because it's not like I need to close the doors for privacy or um, to avoid having all the sound and stuff like that so I didn't need that but as I've mentioned before I am a tax professional I do have access to sensitive information and on the off chance that I do have com company over especially since all my family is talking about coming to visit when the house is ready um, and I do watch my nephews from time to time I decided that I did want to go ahead and add that uh, wall with the French door so that I can close it off and lock it off and that can be separate when people are over so that I can protect my clients and my employers sensitive information. So I did go ahead and do that. It was $1,500 to wall off the flex space to make it into a office. Also downstairs, if you continue to walk through the, um, through the house, the stairs are going to be on the right hand side in my house and 
Um, in the model home, they had the knee wall, which is standard. So again, it wasn't completely upgraded like you would think because um, there's like two levels of upgrades past that. But they had the knee wall. I went ahead and upgraded that to the wooden balusters. Originally, I upgraded it to the iron balusters, but I'm not really a fan of the iron balusters. I went ahead and upgraded to the wooden balusters and to upgrade that was $1,890. That was considered a structural upgrade. So it's the wooden balusters going up to the stairs and upstairs um, on the second floor. Also downstairs, I added the sunroom. So I knew when I went originally to the house to tour the model that I was going to want something on the back because again, I didn't want my house to just be a box. But I also wanted it to be closed in because bugs. So, um, so I knew I didn't just want a regular covered porch. So I knew I was going to choose either the screened in porch or the sunroom. Originally, I was thinking a screened in porch. Um, but then as I was talking to the consultant, he was like, well, the sunroom actually adds more value. Because remember, I'm thinking about resale value because I will be selling this house sometime in the future. The sunroom adds more value because it's actually heated and cooled with the rest of the house. It's closed in. It's actually part of the house, whereas the sun, the screened in porch is not. And then I was like, am I really going to be outside even on a screened in porch? Probably not. So I went ahead and upgraded to the sunroom when it's all said and done. And it was only like $1,500 more than the screened in porch. I ended up spending $11,800 on the sunroom. And then I also did go ahead and add the patio off the back just because I felt like those little six by four patios that they give you was just like, what's the point? What's the point? So I did go ahead and extend the patio out. I do have some plans to do some stuff on the patio later on, but it's not necessarily a priority, but I did want to have a patio out there, um, an actual patio. So if I do have people come over, they can go out there um, and leave me alone. But no, they can go out there. <laughs> um, and then upstairs, I added a tray ceiling to my bedroom. I really... Um, this one is something that my friend suggested. I wasn't really going to the master or the model didn't have the tray ceiling, but I do, you know, I do understand it does kind of help you. It does kind of raise this, the, give you a little bit more room in the, in the master bedroom. So that was $2,250 to add the tray ceiling. That was how much? That was more, that was less when I first spec the homes. Anyway. Also upstairs, I went ahead and changed the, the owner's bathroom to the most upgraded level. So they had the standard, which was level one, which was a stand-up shower and a linen closet and the double vanity and the, the toilet. And then they had the uh, level two, which was the combined tub and shower, like the regular tub shower situation that you'll see in most bathrooms. Um, with the linen closet and then the level three, which is what I got was the separate tub and shower um, I lost the linen closet. I'm okay with that I would much rather have a separate tub and shower and that upgrade for the owner's bath was four thousand six hundred and fifty dollars in total my structural upgrades were twenty three thousand seventy dollars which is more than half of what I actually spent in upgrades. So after the structural, my next biggest focus was electrical. Now, if you've been watching my past videos and you've probably heard me say time and time again that it's easier to add electrical to the top floor of your house or any area where you have attic access than it is on the bottom floor or any floor that has another floor above it. So whatever electrical you think you're going to want to add to those spaces, go ahead and do them now while the walls are down so that you're not spending more money later trying to get them added after the fact. I did do some stuff upstairs, um, but I feel like I focused especially recently on downstairs. The house comes standard with two ceiling fan pre-wires. So that's in the living room area and the owner's bedroom. So other than those two areas, there's gonna be lights that come standard in the um, entryway, the dining room, and the kitchen. Other than that, there's no lights, right? There might be a light um, in the owner's entryway coming from the garage. But other than that, there's no light. So I wanted to have at least a light in all the other rooms that's not on a, that's not on a switch. 
so or not on the outlet so I added a ceiling fan pre-wire to all of the other rooms. So I added um, a ceiling fan to uh, the rest of the three bedrooms, the loft, the sunroom, and both of the flex spaces. So I added seven more ceiling fan pre-wires. Now these can be ceiling fans or they can be lights. I live in Georgia, they're probably gonna be ceiling fans. I've been going back and forth between whether I just wanna do chandeliers in some rooms, but they're probably going to be ceiling fans because it's hot here. So it came with two, I added seven more ceiling fan pre-wires for ceiling fans. And then they don't have, my builder doesn't have like a light option, just if you want a light. They only do ceiling fans. So in order for me to get the pendant lights over my island, I had to add two more ceiling fan pre-wires. So the nine ceiling fan pre-wires came up to $13.50. They were like $1.50 a piece. So I didn't think that that was a lot, even though, like I said, I could have somebody come in and do that after the fact upstairs. So I could have just focused on the downstairs. Here at this house, I've had electricians come in and add lights to places. And I feel like they charged me around the same price. So I wasn't really going to be saving much money by doing it after the fact. So I'd rather much, I'd much rather do it while the walls are down. So that's $13.50 for the ceiling fan. I also added, I think I have like added 20 down lights to the house in addition to the down lights that were already going to be there like in the kitchen so i was able to add four down lights to the living room i added four down lights to the owner's suite i added i think it's two in the um in the hallway upstairs and they have packages for those and when i say down lights i mean like the recessed lighting so there were packages for those three and then i was able to add 10 more so my bathroom came with one above the shower so i added one over the tub i added one over the tub in the secondary bathroom upstairs and then i added four in each of the flex rooms downstairs so there's gonna be a lot of lights if i could have added more i would have added more but again because i was limited i focused those lights downstairs so after I close, I can have somebody come in and um, do the upstairs. And all of those lights together, those 20 down lights, came up to a total of um, $2,500. I also added some low voltage options. So I did have, this is something that I wasn't able to do when I sat down with the consultant, the sales consultant. I did have to talk to the low voltage guy um, in a separate meeting. After I signed the contract, I added the um, surround sound, five piece surround sound system upstairs in the loft. But that was $750. It's just a pre wire, it doesn't include any equipment. Um, I did add two Cat 6 cables to the house. So one already came in my bedroom and one came in the living room. So I added one to the loft because there's going to be a TV there. And I added one to my office because, again, I have sensitive information. I don't need to be using Wi-Fi to access that sensitive information, so I need to be hardwired to the internet. Um, I also added some speakers in my uh, sunroom. That was $450. Oh, the Cat6 cables were $500 for the two. Um, and then I have, I'm gonna mount the TVs in the loft and the living room on the wall. So I paid, I paid to have it to where I can mount the TVs on the wall. That was $580 for both of them. The only other thing I got for electrical was um, coach lights. Some people call them carriage lights. Outside on the garage, they only come with one and it's the one that's you know closest going into the front door. But for safety purposes, I added another one and that was $275. So for electrical, my total cost of upgrades was $6,405. Now, I did spend more than this in like the kitchen but we'll see in a minute my kitchen only has like a couple upgrades the only reason i spent more than this in the kitchen was because shit costs more in the kitchen since i brought up the kitchen let's talk about the kitchen my most essential upgrade in the kitchen was having the range hood vented out of the house and honestly i say if you are building a house and you don't do anything else in the house i suggest that you at least do that it was 490 dollars to for them to make a hole so that when I turn my range hood vent on it takes the smoke and the smells and all the grease and all the nastiness out of the house right now in this house the range hood is not vented outside 
And so the cabinets around it get greasy. The smell lingers in the house. I just don't like that. So I, yes, please take the smells away. Another thing for me that wasn't as essential, but it was something I went back and forth about was the cabinet. Now, if you watch probably any video about upgrades and how much they cost on YouTube, then when you get to the cabinets, people will say, you know, if I wanted this style of cabinet or this color cabinet, which is like the modern options that everybody's choosing, then I had to upgrade to the highest level. That was no different with my builder. All There was four levels of cabinets. Levels one through three were all varying shades of brown. Different designs, I guess, but varying shades of brown. And I wanted shaker style cabinets um, and I didn't want brown. I also didn't want white. I don't like white cabinets. I don't like white, all white kitchens. White gives me anxiety, okay? Like when I see people decorate their entire house in white, I'm like, it's cute, but I could never visit because I'm clumsy. I didn't want brown cabinets. I didn't want white cabinets. If I'm being honest, I didn't even want the gray cabinets, but out of the three options, gray, white, or brown, um, I knew I could live with gray at least in the meantime, because at the time I was like, I'm going to repaint the cabinets anyway. And so I did go back and forth with, am I going to upgrade to the highest level of cabinets? If I'm just going to paint them anyway, or should I go ahead and with the brown? But I decided to go ahead and stick with the upgraded cabinets because not only do you get the gray, but you also get the shaker style, which yes, I could have bought shaker style doors after the fact, maybe. Um, but that's even more money on top of painting the cabinets and I don't know if it would have been cheaper but you also get bigger cabinets at that level too so it wasn't just necessarily the color of the cabinets or the style of the doors now they do not come with soft clothes but to upgrade to the level four cabinets was three thousand nine hundred and seventy dollars now this price includes the bathrooms as well so it's the kitchen the master bathroom and the secondary bathroom all those cabinets get upgraded when you upgrade your cabinet so now for the countertops so if you watch my model walkthrough video then you'll notice that i chose the same originally i chose the same cabinets as the model and the model had the standard countertops and they were granite they're called iberian white they're like white with some um brown or not some brown they had some gray and some black i think in it and when i first pulled it out I liked it um, with the gray countertop or the gray cabinets based on a small sample of the gray cabinet with this small sample of the countertop and the model had it and I really liked it I didn't think it was look too busy because um, one thing about granite is it can it can look extremely busy and that's why I've never really been a fan of granite countertops to be honest but it didn't look too busy with the uh, in the model home but the model had white cabinets and I had toured another home that had the same countertop. They had white cabinets. And when I put the gray countertop or the gray cabinet with the small sample of the countertop, I liked it together, but I just kept going back and forth to like, I don't know how this is gonna look when I choose my backsplash because I didn't choose the builder's backsplash. So that's something I'm gonna do later on. And I know that I wanted a color. I didn't want it to be white. I didn't want it to be gray, which is why I didn't go with their options because that's all they had. So yeah, I wasn't sure that the countertop and the cabinets together would look good with whatever color uh, backsplash I chose. So last week I went ahead and decided to upgrade to the white quartz, which I also showed in that model walkthrough video. For the island, I went ahead and had them do the extension on the countertop so that people can actually sit it's like a bar top extension i guess it's called so people can sit at the island or so of course when i upgraded the countertop it upgraded that as well and i upgraded the counter in the owner's bathroom to the same white quartz so when i add the all the quartz countertops upgraded to all the quartz countertops together it comes out to 2690 so that's 2694 the perimeter of the kitchen the kitchen island with the bar top extension and my bathroom speaking of my bathroom in addition to changing the countertops to the quartz i also chose i also upgraded the tile in the bathroom on the wall and the floors so again if you watch the model walkthrough then you'll see the actual color that i chose 
but it's basically going to be a subway tile light gray on the floor and the walls of the shower and the wall surrounding the tub and the total for that is 750 so it's 170 for the wall tile and $580 for the floor tile. So speaking of flooring, <laughs> I love how each section segues into the next section. I did not plan that. But downstairs in the house, there's hardwood that comes standard in the foyer, in the kitchen, and in the dining room. Everything else downstairs is carpet other than the powder room. The powder room would have been vinyl. What I did was I extended the hardwood throughout the sunroom, the living room, and the powder room, and the owner's entry, which is the garage, coming in from the garage. So now the only spaces downstairs that don't have hardwood are the two flex spaces, and I chose carpet for those. I do have allergies, and I do have asthma, and I know most people that have those ailments don't like carpet in the house. I love carpet actually. Um, so I chose to keep carpet in the areas that I know I'm going to be in a lot, which is like my office, the extra flex space that I'm going to also use for work upstairs. Um, and then downstairs, I did go ahead and put hardwood. I don't want carpet throughout the whole house. Don't get me wrong. But my house that I'm living in right now is carpet, is hardwood everywhere. And I kind of miss carpet sometimes. So I kept carpet on the stairs. I kept carpet upstairs, you know, in all the rooms other than obviously the bathroom and the laundry room. And I did hardwood throughout the bottom except for those two flex spaces. So to add hardwood to all the rest of the areas downstairs was $3,390. Now that was adding the base level hardwood. I really would have liked to upgrade one level to get the thicker plank so I got the three inch plank I would have loved to upgrade to get the five inch plank but that means I would have had to upgrade every single space so like the sunroom was a separate space the living room was a separate space the powder room is a separate space and that can get expensive so I stayed with the level one if I would have upgraded I don't even know how much it cost I didn't ask him because, um, well, I did ask him how much it would cost to upgrade. And he was like, well, it depends on the room. And when he said that, I was like, mm, I'm good. We just gonna stick with the level one because that sounds like it can be expensive. And then as far as carpet goes, like I mentioned, I got carpet on the two, in the two flex spaces downstairs, on the stairs and all of upstairs, except for the two, uh, the bathroom and the laundry room. And I did upgrade the carpet. Now, some people say you shouldn't upgrade the carpet. You should only upgrade the pad. But I didn't want brown carpet. And the only way for me to get gray carpet was to upgrade. So I upgraded. It wasn't expensive at all. It was like $300 to upgrade all the rooms to the gray carpet. So I didn't think that that was that bad. And the only other thing that I have left um, that I upgraded was adding the faux wood blinds to the entire house. So not just the downstairs, but also the upstairs. And I mentioned this in a prior video and I said that the blinds, the whole house blinds were $200. I don't know where I got $200 from. These things were $750. I still felt like it was a decent price. Um, and it's something that I don't have to worry about when I move in. As soon as I move in, I have that privacy. I can wait to worry about getting, um, you know, curtains and the blinds that I want later. So I didn't, I mean... I didn't think I spent $750. Would I do it again? Probably. Probably because I know from moving a lot as, as a kid and helping my friend move into her house that she had built a couple years ago, getting blinds is stressful. So I would much rather just have that done. And I don't care. I'm not going to say I wouldn't care the price because I would care the price. But $750 is not enough for me to care about the price. Like just please just go ahead and put them up so I ain't got to worry about them, at least for right now. They will be changed out eventually, but I ain't got to worry about it right now. So those are all the things that I did add to my house. The total options that I, the total options cost was $41,845. One thing that you need to know when it comes to these options is that while it's good to get an idea of what other people are spending on their stuff, obviously the prices are going to change based on the timing, your location, your builder, and what you choose and the materials that they use right so um 
just keep that in mind when you're watching these videos. And that's why I don't really mind mentioning how much I spent because somebody's gonna spend more, somebody spent less. It doesn't matter. At the end of the how at the end of the day, I'm paying for it. So so anyway, that's all I have for you today for this video. I was going to include what I didn't get and why I didn't get it and why I don't regret it and what I didn't get and why I should have gotten it and why I do regret it in this video. But I feel like this video is too long already, so I'm going to do a part two. So make sure you look out for that. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't done so already, please like, subscribe, turn on your notification bells. Again, I have a goal to hit 300 subscribers by the end of December. Um, which is only a couple weeks away and I know that we can do that but I can't do that without you guys support so if you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed yet go ahead and hit that red button turn on your notifications so you can be notified when I do the next video which again is going to be about what I didn't choose in my upgrades thank you guys so much again for watching and I will see you in the next one bye